Dobodan from Podgorica and what a beautiful afternoon it is. So we are planning today to spend a bit more time exploring and seeing what the city has to offer. We touched the base of it. If you watch our last video you see we took a stroll around the old town but we still had our backpacks on and weren't really really refreshed and ready for the day. So we've got a bit more energy now, I've had a bit of food and we're going to go and have a look and see what uh, Pogrids is all about. But so far, so good. Very, very pretty uh, street this one. Very nice. So for me, Podgorica is very much a city of contrasts in the same way most are in Bosnia is. So you will turn and you will see a beautiful building complete history and you know perfect design and then you'll turn a corner and you'll see a building which is completely damaged and it takes a lot of money to rebuild a city and so that process is going to take some time and I can see looking round that this is something that is plaguing them for instance you see this building here with its beautiful design and then you'll see this building here, which is uh, badly damaged and broken. Now don't let that fool you. I think that adds character to the city. You know, it shows you that there's been a history here of sorts. But nonetheless, it's easy to tell that the local government are having a hard time redeveloping this city. And you've got to bear in mind that this place was completely levelled in World War II and it had to be rebuilt from the ground up and thankfully managed to retain a lot of its character along the way. <laughs> got to be careful crossing roads. <laughs> you really have. But uh, we're making our way over to the mille mill that's a hard word to say, Millennium Bridge. Millennium. Millennium. <laughs> the Millennium Bridge which is a bit of a landmark of uh, Podgorica. So let's go and have a closer look. So this isn't quite the Millennium Bridge. Oh, got it right that time. Uh, this is the Union Bridge, which uh, is the smaller of the bridges, but nonetheless has a beautiful flowing river and some mountains in the background over here as well. So, Quite a few bridges in this country, or in this uh, in this city at least. I'm not sure about Montenegro as a whole, but certainly a lot of bridges here. Must be a bridge place. So, people keep saying to us, why have you gone to Montenegro, guys? Well, for me, I think it's about being able to show people that there is so much more to the world than just Italy and Spain and Portugal. Those places are wonderful, don't get me wrong. But when you think of tourism, you don't think of Montenegro. And to be honest, since being here, I'm kind of confused as to why that is, because it has a lot of the qualities that you would look for from a holiday. Beautiful mountains, cheap food and beer, friendly locals, cheap flight to get here. I think the flight to get here was around 143 pounds. It does say exactly how much it is in the last video, so do watch it if you're curious. But it ticks so many boxes and yet few people visit. Now I do appreciate, and as I've mentioned before, that infrastructurally this place does need work. But it's still quite a young nation if you think about it. You know, it was only in the 90s that this would have been part of the Yugoslavian Republic. When I was a kid growing up, this place to me was known as Yugoslavia. That's how I knew it. And. Uh, Obviously when that split off into the various of various countries, they had to go and find their own identity and build something that is unique to them. Now Montenegro definitely got it right with their flag. Completely right. That is one of the coolest flags I've ever seen. I know I always say that when I see that flag, but it really is such a cool flag. But unlike say Croatia, and probably to a small degree Bosnia. Montenegro hasn't experienced the same 
resurgence in tourism and people being interested in visiting. So I'm hoping that these kind of videos will go a small way to being able to help alleviate that. Now one thing I will say is that Podgorica is one of the smaller capital cities in Europe. Now if you were to pull up a map on Google and have a look at Podgorica, you will see that it doesn't span that much of an area really. Pair that with the fact that there isn't that many bus links or regular bus links you can imagine that getting around the city is a relatively quick endeavour but at the same time it allows you to see some pretty wonderful different sights and a variation of greenery and beautiful trees and mountains there nestled in the background possibly the most addictive sound you'll ever hear is the uh, sound of a, uh, a Montenegrin traffic sign telling you that you're good to go. It's got a really satisfying beat and as someone who's into metal music well you can imagine all the guitar riffs that I'm creating in my head but as I walk in I'm noticing here a, uh, a statue. Now I can't read the local language so you may have to help me out and explain who this person is to me but clearly a figure of importance and what a beautiful statue that is as well. I do feel it's important to mention that Montenegro isn't completely tourist free. There are some hot spots which are highly coveted by tourists and we are going to visit one of them tomorrow in fact. And it's a small town called Kotor, I think that's how you pronounce it. And we're getting a coach there. So we're taking a coach trip. I believe the coach trip cost me and Tammy 23 pounds for a return. And that's a two, well it's a four hour round journey, about a five hour, two and a half hours each way, round journey. And uh, it is apparently one of the most beautiful places in Europe. When people think of beauty, they perhaps think of Dubrovnik. Now Dubrovnik was, if you're familiar, in Croatia. We did visit, so go and watch it if you haven't seen it before. Dubrovnik is, it was given fame by the uh, Game of Thrones series. So of course they filmed it there. People saw Game of Thrones and they were like, wow. I want to visit that place too and so obviously tourism in that area became very popular. Now Kotor is kind of similar to Dubrovnik in many ways but it'd be interesting to see how it differs as well. So Podgorica as a capital city is very tourist free. You don't get as many tourists as you would in a traditional capital city. I went to Slovakia recently well, we both did of course and uh, I was under the assumption that it would be uh, quite a tourist free place but actually no there were quite a few tourists about whereas Podgorica itself is far from that so I'm not going to go and walk on this lovely grass I don't know if I'm permitted to to be honest but we're getting closer and this bridge is a uh, well, somewhat of a monument to the uh, to the country, really. Uh, an architectural feat, many of you may agree. In fact, we'll walk on this smaller bridge to get a view of the bigger bridge. It seems like a strange tactic, but uh, I think that'll give you the best view. <laughs> Walking on the bridge may not uh, may not do it the justice it really deserves. And of course, as you can see here, we've got another statue, and I'll go and look at closer that or closer at that in a minute. But as I said earlier, <laughs> Montenegro is a very, very bridge friendly country. Lots of bridges, which I don't mind, I do like a bridge. Lots of bridges in Scotland as well, in fact. But one of the most famous bridges we visited recently was uh, in Mostar. And again, very similar watercolour. In fact, Borgoritsa representing. Well, will you look at that, eh? Blimey, be careful, eh? Because uh, you have got that there. And here is the Millennium Bridge in all its glory. What a work of art. We will go for a stroll over it shortly, but uh, I did want you to see it. Let's zoom in as well so you can really appreciate that. Look at that design. And of course, look how crystal clear the water is. I mean, I'm not working for the tourist board of Montenegro or anything, but I am equally confused as to why people aren't visiting in their drones. 
does somewhat confuse me. This place is incredible. I mean, really, I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. You know, there are issues, as I say, transport links aren't great. You do have to pay for a taxi, unless you're patient enough to wait for the train. But the payoff is great. And as I say, if you're from England, you can get the, uh, the Gatwick Airport, and that would be probably 70 pounds for a return ticket. 70 pounds to come here. Absolutely insane. But let's go and look at that bridge. In what is perhaps a stroke of luck, I've uh, stumbled across a lovely park. Now, the bridge is back there, but uh, unfortunately, well, fortunately for me, for me, I guess unfortunately for you guys, well, I guess fortunately, because you're, you're getting to see more stuff, but Montenegro has uh, presented us with yet another delight. And you can see here, we have a lovely park. Now, both me and Tammy are rather exhausted. It's a lot hotter than we were bargaining for and uh, it currently sits at 26 degrees yeah. though if I'm going to be honest it does feel hotter well, it doesn't help that we're wearing dark clothes yep you're completely right Tam yeah we are <laughs> we're dressed in black and uh, I'm wearing a, uh, a pair of jeans which isn't the smartest of moves we too, mate. We too. but we have a pavilion here which we will sit under get a bit of shade and then we'll perhaps think about going to get a drink and maybe some food so as promised, we're going to take a walk on the famous Podgorica Millennium Bridge. And strangely enough, it wasn't built in the millennium. That was the assumption I had until I looked into it. So Podgorica's bridge was actually built on the 13th of July. July 2005. 2005. And um, why was it built, Tam? Because that day, so 13th of July, is believed to be Montenegro's National Day. The National Day of Montenegro. I didn't know about this. No. Now I ain't going to stand here and lie to you and tell you that we're learned. We did look on Wikipedia, so we could be yeah. completely wrong. Um, but nonetheless, it's still interesting to learn a bit about the history of the place you're visiting. The bridge is also 173 metres long. It's crazy. Now that is quite an architectural marvel. I mean, I, I love architecture. It's one of the reasons that I love to travel. It's for the architecture. I'm very passionate about that. Seven million euros. Seven million euros. It was built by a Slovenian company called Primo Prim, Primoje. Primo G. Prim, Primoje. I'll go Primo Primoje. A J is usually a yeah sound. In, but I've never been to Slovenia, so I could be wrong. But um, it's uh, it's quite a monumental effort, really, to think that this bridge was built so long ago, and yet still stands so tall and so proud. And somewhere over in the far distance, <laughs> over that way is our apartment because we can see this bridge from there we can indeed we can see this bridge from our apartment and that's what uh, kind of made us want to come and visit it you know we saw it from the apartment we we're like wow what a beautiful you know bridge and we looked into it and found out a bit about it and uh, it's brought us here you know so uh, again as i was saying earlier I'm, I'm particularly interested in architecture um the different styles of buildings around the world always fascinate me and to see how the influence and history shapes the buildings and how the buildings change over time and uh the same sounds true with bridges really but quite an incredible bridge i mean i'm not a bridge fanatic or anything don't get me wrong i'm not a bridge channel but uh i do know a nice bit of architecture and engineering prowess when i see it and uh there's a, t a twin bridge situation going on here. Now, one of the coolest bridges we saw was the Father Bernatek Bridge oh, yeah. in uh, Krakow. Yeah. You can probably see that in some of our quite old vlogs. <laughs> the quality's not very good, but if you're interested, it's there. Oh, what a view. Look how insane that is. And what a view. Let's, uh, let's see if I can show you. I don't know how well you can see that, but that is a, a rather nice view if it's the distance there. As promised, I uh, I did come back for this statue, and I must be honest, I have no idea who, who this person is. Um, I cannot read the writing, and I do not understand uh, understand what it means. But if anyone in the comments can help me and tell me who that is, that would be great. So I guess the ultimate question is, is Montenegro worth visiting? Tam, what do you think? Absolutely. What do you like about it? It's just got that, wow. Um, 
I've been blown away by so many places. But this just tops it. Now bear in mind we've been to the deserts of Oman. We've been to the mountains of Switzerland, but this is this is very unique for me. This is a very unique mm. experience. It's got it's got such a charm and such a uh, such a mystique to it that it's almost hard to describe. Like I know very little of Montenegro. It's a quite a, an elusive place to me, which made it all the more worthwhile when it came to visiting it because I came here with no real expectations or assumptions or. I can't get over how small the actual country is, though. It's a very small country, but then actually, when you actually think about it, it does take a while to traverse. Contrary to what I was saying earlier, because um, it's, for instance, to get from the airport to the centre, it takes about two and a half hours on foot. <laughs> you know. But then again, in London, it would take about that amount of time to get to from A to B if you're walking. But the infrastructure in London is is better, you know, and that's obviously because you know you have to understand. It's, it's, it's well, Montenegro is a young country, really. It's it's still in its in its in its formative years, really, when you compare it to how old England is or any other country. It's quite a young country. It was part of the Yugoslav Republic, and you know, in the 90s when it broke up, it became its own country and, and indeed this this city itself this capital city was only really founded in 2006 so that within itself is uh is quite amazing to consider that really this this was only a capital city since 2006 yeah it does it seems to be geared more towards you know vehicle transport like cars and stuff like that um whereas you know london or paris milan wherever is geared more towards you know public transport but it has to be it has to be mentioned that you know montenegro is quite a small country mm. so uh obviously investing heavily in the transportation sector probably isn't top list of priorities for them but uh and in terms of yeah i guess the other kind of warning i would give is uh do come equipped with some language like a couple of phrases or be prepared to use google translate i, I have mentioned this in the previous video but english is not massively spoken amongst the younger generation it is the, the younger generation seem to be quite very 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 good at english actually but the older generation are not so capable and uh, that's kind of how it is everywhere really i've noticed but you should never really expect people to speak english purely because it's a more universal language you should at least try so do give it a go the word, language is a challenge at first there are some tongue twisters but for the basic phrases you, you're not going to do too bad and uh, as long as you can be made out, you know, and you can be relatively understood, you don't need to do any trills or rolls or anything. It's not that vital. So uh, do try and learn the language would be another recommendation. Um, any thoughts on the negatives, Tam? Only with what you said, you know, the infrastructure is bad. But then obviously we've come from a more developed country, so we're going to bound to think that. You know, I think had we like been born here and then obviously we were brought up here, we'd be used to it, um, and it wouldn't be an issue. But obviously, you know, beggars can't be choosers. You've either got to carry cash with you, like most. Yes, yes, well mentioned. Yes, yeah, so obviously cash is king here. So if Absolutely. you are like us, a fan of using cards, we don't, like, go, like, we, we don't like beep, beep, cash. We don't like carrying cash, do we? We, we don't like carrying cash. We we in England you don't you don't need to carry cash and in most European countries you don't need to carry cash with you we went through the whole of Croatia pretty much 90% of Bosnia um, but this has been a different experience when we went to no but it was when we went to Bosnia that we had to apart from obviously like the tourist area where we could pay by card but where we were staying we had to pay by cash everyone we asked was like no 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 it's a cash machine there yeah you if you watch our bosnia videos you'll see a lot yeah. of people saying that we can't pay by card and it's pretty much the same here that i've noticed yes but apart from that cafe we was in earlier waiting for our apartment you get so, more no's than yeses and that's the same yeah. as bosnia so it does suffer from a lot of the same issues as bosnia but who knows in a few years time they may introduce that more around here I, know. I mean, it's a it's, it's a country that is that is constantly developing. developing, and uh, you know, new things are happening every day. And, and I've got great, I've got great, great feeling about the future of Montenegro. Yeah. It's a great country. But I'm not knocking the country. It is no, beautiful. not at all. I love this country. Not it at all. Is beautiful. And it's not exactly a third world country either. No, exactly. By any means, it's a very it's a well developed country with a good good system. But the infrastructure compared to what we're used to is different. Mm. So if you're coming from a country with a stronger infrastructure, just be prepared that the infrastructure 
and the, the system of cash isn't as good as what you'd be used to. But look, again, I'm not slagging off your country, Montenegro. I think you guys are great. Uh, but yeah. I do feel it's important to be honest and forthright. And obviously, I know some people ain't going to like that. People are going to turn their nose up at the fact that I'm saying something negative. But I've got you negative... you take the negative to the positive. You have. And I've got, I mean? I've got negative things to say about England. Oh, you absolutely. Know? And that's where I'm from. So mm -hmm. don't think of it as a personal attack. I just try to be as real with everybody exactly. as we can. Turn that negative into a positive, you know. You can do it, Montenegro. Get more card machines and get more buses, and, and you'll be you'll be you'll be winning. But we do want to bring my brother-in-law here, or Tam's yeah, brother. Uh, we think he would love it. He's very much into nature as well. So again, yeah. if you're into nature and scenery, and architecture, give it a watch, give it a visit. But anyway, I've rabbited on more than enough. We hope this video has been informative. Yeah, you don't stop talking. <laughs> very true. Hope this video has been useful, informative, and. Uh, we appreciate your time and do keep your eyes peeled for the next video where we'll be exploring Montenegrin cuisine. Take care people, have a great day. Can't wait. See you later. Bye.